Awesome. Just so have everybody click continue. Yep. Everybody click. I'm sorry. If everybody uh, click continue on that uh, recording notification, just make sure everybody's comfortable with that. It's a new Zoom feature. Mm, new Zoom feature. So yeah, let's click. If you guys get a notification on there, just click that you're okay with it being recorded and then we can get started. Let's rock. All right, so is it good to go? Yeah, for sure. All right, so perfect. Yeah, well, hey guys, um, I'm Tina Call, and so thanks so much for joining my class today. I'm beyond pumped to help you guys learn the five pillars that took me from $40,000 a year to over a million dollars a year consistently in my business. And actually, Billy, I just realized I wanna start my video. I should probably say yeah. hi to everybody. So there we go. Can you guys see me? Put yes in the chat box if you can see me okay. Um, I got my little glasses on. Can you see me there? I can. Yeah. All right, they can see me. Yay. Okay, right. so again, I am Tina Call. Thanks for joining the class today. I'm beyond pumped again, like I said, to help you guys learn those five pillars, going from 40,000 to a million dollars. And I did that in four years. And just know that the things that I'm gonna teach you guys today, they haven't just worked for me. Throughout the class, I'm going to be introducing you to a few of my friends that actually took the same advice and completely changed their lives with it. And I'm sure you're asking yourself, you know, why the heck is she doing all this, right? Well, let me tell you guys, I want you to build, I want to build a powerful network and I want the partners that are with us. So we have a lot of people on the call that are actually with us um, to have the right tools to be successful. And especially in this wild, wild, crazy market. So the, the um, first person that I want you to meet um, is Michelle Sayward. And Michelle Sayward is in Michigan, and she's actually um, one of my sponsors now here at EXP, but she actually used the five steps and went from selling 20 homes per year to get this guy's over 185 homes personally per year with two assistants. When I tell you she is a machine, she is absolutely a machine. So go follow her on social media as well. She is awesome. So oh, let me admit somebody that just popped into the room. There we go. Um, so if you're looking for results like Michelle's, then just I hope you have a piece of paper, take some notes, keep watching through the end of the class. And remember, for everybody that stays till the end of the class, if you're not already with me, I'm going to send you guys the script. So at least you'll get a few goodies for free just for uh, joining us today. So now I'm guessing for a lot of you, there's this is probably not a first web class. It's my first web class, but it's not yours um, about generating wealth in the world of real estate. And the first thing I want to mention is that if you failed at hitting a seven figure income, it is totally not your fault. If you failed at getting listing appointments over and over and over and closing them, I completely understand because I've actually been there, too. When you look at the real estate market, there's a lot of crazy info out there about how to create wealth, how to build your business through real estate. And the information overload practically keeps us from success. But here forward, I, I feel like I'm gonna give you guys the answers that you need and hopefully be your one-stop shop for success. I promise you guys this, um, I have not found a better way. So if you've been concerned in the past that you can't have a thriving business because you're not having enough sales, I want to put the fears to rest today because you can easily do this. You just need the right person to explain it to you. If I can do it, anybody can do it. So thinking about the real estate market, there's a lot of real estate experts out there that want you to think that success in real estate comes from things like being some kind of SEO master, knowing how to build click funnels or YouTube pages, knowing how to run ads um, to generate leads or worse, this is the worst one, having to become a social media star or starting a podcast when I know a lot of you here are still that agent that doesn't even want your photo taken, right? For goodness sakes, am I right? Put it in the box. Do you like your photo taken? Do you want to be on video? No, most of you do not. And I'm here to tell you that those gurus, they were all wrong for me. They, they have their own reasons, I'm sure, that they want you to believe that you have to do that, but it's simply not true if you want a duplicatable listing business. Yeah. Now, Victoria said no. <laughs> Victoria said no. Yes, I know. You do not want to be a social media star. And trust me, the first 14, 15 years of my business, I did not put my face out there anywhere, anywhere. Um, but if you stop and think about how big the business of real estate is from schools that are getting paid to teach you guys how to pass an exam to the actual test itself, 
to the MLS dues and fees, the association yearly dues and fees, brokerages charging you monthly desk fees before you even sell anything to the 5 million other apps, the CRMs, the postcard campaigns, the pay-per-click leads, and every other shiny gimmick out there. And the truth is, if you have a pulse, any broker will hire you, right? And then you're left fending for yourself because the brokerage doesn't have additional capacity or funding to give you guys the one-on-one -on -one attention and the skills, the skills being the most important word here that you need. So you're kind of left by yourself. Nobody's investing in you. And that's why I hate to say it, 87% of agents fail in the first few years. And I want to help you guys fix this because this is an awesome career. So if you're like a driven person, you've got your license and you want to make a lot of money and have a consistent stream, then I believe this plan is going to be for you if you can get over just a few of your fears. I was just like you guys. I had a dream to grow my business fast by getting new sales opportunities every single day. And I wanted to do it without all the fluff and you know, stuff just distracting me. And eventually, thank God, I figured it out. And I want to show you guys how to do it in the web class today. So it doesn't matter if this is your first day in the business, if, if you've been doing this for 20 years like myself, regardless of where you're at in your career, I'll show you guys the very least how to double your current production year after year. So if you're at eight deals, we'll get you to 16. 16 will double that, right? Get you guys to 30, 32 deals. I want to help you guys cut through the noise so you can have that rock star career and still have time to focus on things that actually matter, like your family, your travel, growing your team, maybe expanding into different businesses. And at the end of the class, if you think these strategies and tactics, you know, that you're going to learn are the key to doubling your business and ultimately hitting the million dollar year. I want you guys to commit to going all in for your family. Um, I used to have, I, I used to say this to Kevin all the time. I am a warrior for my family, right? You have to have that mentality. So who here is a warrior for their family? Say yes in the chat box. Um, before we jump into the secrets though, let me tell you guys a little story about two agents who went through this knowledge and what happened to them after they did, okay? So these two agents I love dearly. The first agent is Mackenzie Sotini. Um, she was actually my son's teacher. And she came to me one day and she said, you know what, I'm burned out. I've been teaching for 15 years. I love it. She actually got awards for teaching. And she said, I want to go into corporate America and I want to teach adults. I want to teach adult children. <laughs> and I said, well, it's, if you want to teach adults, why don't you come into real estate? Because we're, we're training and helping adults find homes. So she didn't believe me at first. And so she decided she wanted to get her real estate license and come work for me as an assistant. And she was our listing coordinator, which she did a fantastic job. She promised me two years in that role. And of course, after a year, she started to get the itch. So we put her into a sales role and guess what guys, her first 12 months in real estate, she sold 50 homes, 50 homes. Think about that. The average realtor sells four homes a year and she sold 50 and she sold listings. She got 30 listings and the rest were buyers. And I can't tell you how proud I am of her, but she, she actually deployed the toxic tactics. I'm going to show, share with you guys today. The next for, Oh, excuse me. First day with my new, uh, you know, uh, body parts here. <laughs> um, so the second person I'm going to tell you about is charity, charity Masaudi. Um, was a realtor at Keller Williams. She sold one home. She had four jobs. She was an Uber driver, a mom. She worked at a modeling agency. She worked at a tech company. And when I met her, she was just lost. And so the first 12 months of her business, again, doing these tactics, she sold 20 homes. She only has one, two jobs. She's a mom and she's a full-time realtor. She's on track to do 60 transactions. And guess what? Her second year in the business, she actually has a team of four agents and they're tracking for 60 deals this year. Guys, this is not rocket science, but it does take somebody to, to take these tactics and actually implement them. So I'm gonna introduce you to one more person. Um, and I, I mean, this guy is no joke. So Phil DeMuth, um, Phil came from corporate America and he followed the plan. In his first year in real estate, this guy is a beast. He sold 48 homes. Guys, 48 homes his first year in real estate. His second year in real estate, 
tracking for 128 homes and he brought on two agent partners. He did the exact same thing. I mean, he's a rock star. So these are just three regular agents, right? Who one day decided they're going to go all in and look at them now, right? They're thriving. And you can do exactly what they did if you stick to a plan. So let me ask you guys in the chat, Who's here? How to? Who's here that wants to get results like Mackenzie, like Charity, and like Philip? Right? Say yes, because these are real people. You can literally—they're in Raleigh. You can call them up on the phone. You can follow them on social media. They're actually amazing, and they've become so confident that they're—they're they're literally putting their videos out there just with testimonials. Like, hey guys, you can do this too. They're really, really awesome. Yes, yes ton of yeses, ton of yeses. I love it. I love it. So. These there's five easy steps to follow that empower you to reach your real estate success. And without them, I've watched agents have frustrating and inconsistent businesses. I use them. My call group team uses them. My mentees use them. And I truly believe you need to use them, too. So remember, after committing, you're literally days away from seeing results. But again, it only happens if you go all in and you want to build a duplicatable foundation. So real quick, before I jump into the steps, let me give you a quick intro about myself and explain how I came across the secrets and the impact that they've been able to have on myself and my team and those around us. So I'm Tina Call, for those that don't know me. Um, last year, actually the last few years, I personally sold 135 homes and my team did hundreds of more sales. So I'm talking about me, 135 homes, hating my life, mind you, because that's a lot of homes and I don't recommend selling that many without growing a team. But these results, right, allow me to personally earn over a million dollars a year in commissioned income. And that's not including my team's revenue, guys. That is just one human. So I'm going to tell you guys a quick story about my first day in real estate. But I'm going to take a drink of this tea real quick because my voice is going to go. So my first day in real estate was actually 21 years ago. It was on September 11th, if you guys can believe that. I was 22 years old, living in Michigan. I'm driving to the office my first day, right? Listening to the news about our planes hitting the towers. And it was just such a sad and unforgettable day. Here I am so excited to venture out, right? Into my new career with my new outfit on, feeling all good. And then that news hits, right? And so my entire brokerage just for weeks, people were pulling out of contracts. Nobody paid attention to me because I was just a newbie. I mean, we had other things going on in the world. So for me, it was just so sad and unforgettable. And um, yeah, I mean, I, I had to figure it out. So after many, many months trying to learn the ropes, right, myself, my first year, I made around $80,000, which was actually pretty good. And I knew I had found my thing, right? I had had, luckily, a lot of friends that bought homes and family, um, and I had a sphere, right? I lived there for 30 years. That was 20 years ago, and that was a great living. Now, fast forward, there was the crash of 2006. Now, Michigan was hit way two years earlier, right? We had the crash of 2008, but my income went from $150,000 at its peak, which I was, what, six, seven years into the business, down to 40,000. Literally in a matter of months, 75% of my income disappeared. And I was not happy. And when this happened, I lost my, my momentum, my excitement, my hope about real estate. I just was kind of ready to quit. And I said to my husband, I'm like, if I'm only gonna make $40,000 in this business, I'm just not having fun. I'm going to go into decorating. I pulled an ad all in a day design. I love to decorate. Um, you can see I have a pretty decent backdrop here. I just love it. So I was packing up my desk at the real estate office and I noticed this piece of paper, right? And it was stuck between my desk and the wall and I grabbed it and I unfolded it and I saved it for six, seven years. And the headline said, make a million dollars per year selling real estate with our coaching from the seminar guy, right? And I had saved this info in my file for years and years. And at that moment, I didn't have $2,000 a month to pay for the coaching. So what did I do? Crumple it up, threw it away, feeling like, you know, there was no way I could do this. And I headed home. And by a stroke of luck, the next day, as I continued to clean out my office, literally, I was leaving the business. I got an email from the same seminar guru guy announcing that there was going to be an event. And the event was taking place literally 25 minutes from my office 
the next week. I mean, what a stroke of luck, right? So I'm thinking this is a sign, right? God is saying, hello, I'm trying to give you signs. You're not paying attention. So I convinced a few realtors in my office that were friends of mine that I knew had taken a dive in their business, plus my broker in charge, because I loved him and I wanted him to be successful. And I said, guys, let's just go. And it, it was one of the best decisions I've ever made. When we got there, there was this phase of in introductions, right? There were probably, I would say about 150 agents in the room. And these agents at the front of the room, looking sharp, all dressed up, looking really happy, kept standing up and saying things like, hi, I'm so-and-so. And last year I did over 200,000 in commissions. Last year I did over 300, 400. There was even a guy that was 25 years old. He was a, a furniture salesman. He had been in the business for two years in this crash and he was making um, $450,000. And I was just blown away. So of course I raced to the bathroom. I didn't want to miss a beat. Um, and I ran into the top producer in my market. Now in my market here in Raleigh, we have some massive producers. We have Marty Hampton, who's the number one Remax agent in the world. It would be like running into her. And she's at a seminar and it's a supposedly, I thought for newbies. So she was surprised to see me. I could tell like she felt like I discovered her secret. And I asked her if she was using the same techniques taught in the seminar. And she said to me, yes. And then she proceeded to tell me there were three things I needed to do to be successful because I asked her, I said, Beline, I'm struggling. You know, I'm young. I love this business. What's what advice would you give me? And she said, kid, you need to read self-improvement books. You need to hire a coach. And you need to surround yourself with big thinking people. And then she walked away. And I was, it was like that Jedi moment, like, wait, you gave me the answers, but I need more. But, you know, obviously she didn't, she, I don't think she had that incentivized leadership to help me. Right. So I took those lessons. I learned the seminar. I paired it with her advice. I hired a coach for the first time in my seven year career that day. I thought my husband was going to kill me um, because we could not afford the coaching and doing that over the next six months, I actually sold enough homes to bring my income back to 150,000. So remember from 40,000 to 150. And my coach actually instilled in me the thinking big process. What do you want in life? What are your dreams? What do you wanna do? Well, one of our dreams was to move away from freezing Michigan to beautiful North Carolina. And I used to say to my husband, why do we live where the wind hurts our face, literally hurts your face when you walk outside? And um, I was so confident, though, at that time that I could use the skills that I had learned to start my business in a new direction. And I could take it across the U.S. and literally duplicate it. I was determined, right, to be successful. So why? Because I was armed with knowledge, right? The knowledge that I'm about to share with you. I knew I had learned skills that I needed to reach out to people, people that I didn't know, and I could close deals anywhere. So if you have that skill that you could talk to anybody and land deals, you literally can live anywhere. So look, I get it. I once had no idea what to do, and I'm excited to help you guys cut through the layers of learning that I had to go through just to give you guys the good. So one last time, before we dive into these five secrets, I wanna show you one other agent that used the five steps and turned it all around, okay? Um, her name is Kathy Lynch. She's a friend of mine. She's an awesome agent. She was on a team and the team was failing during COVID. So literally COVID hits, Kathy's on this team and the team leader said, everybody go home. Now who in the chat box just, you know, I don't, everybody's from different brokerages around the country. Whose broker just said, everybody go home and let's just chill. Um, that was a common theme. And so I said, no, we can't just chill. We have to dive in. We have to help our sellers and our buyers not be scared. And so we jumped in and we started calling our people. Well, I started this group at the time and it was basically a prospecting group and it was agents I didn't know. And Kathy was one of them. She jumped into this group. I taught her these skills and all of a sudden she's like, oh my God, I came from corporate America and I knew there was a better way than just waiting for my team leader to give me leads. I knew there was a more proactive way out there. I just didn't know how to get it. And she's like, you totally 
opened up my mind and thank you. And so she actually um, joined us week after week after week and she was a student. And now she's tracking, I think this is actually an old slide, probably 30 homes. She's doing amazing. So here's what we're gonna cover in the next 30 minutes or so, right? Number one, this is the first secret, how to sound confident and knowledgeable in every sales situation for the rest of your career, okay? Secret number two, how to successfully reach out to the cheapest leads on the planet and convert them into clients. These clients, guys, are being begged to, to be sold. They want us to call them. They may not know it yet, but they do want us to call them. And number three, how to keep a full pipeline of ideal prospects and make sure that every appointment you go on is worth your time. I can't tell you how many appointments I went on were a waste of time. Um, secret number four, how to simply build your, your CMA, your competitive market analysis, without having to be an engineer to understand comps and da data so you can close deals fast. Um, I always found that you know my brain didn't work like that. I, didn't, I couldn't put together one of those 50-page market analysis reports. Um, and you lose half the people when you do. Um, and secret number five, how to present like a rock star and close sales nonstop. So let's dive into it, guys. Secret number one, how to sound confident and knowledgeable in every sales situation for the rest of your career. I'm going to take a little drink here. All right. So I'm sure a lot of you feel this way about yourselves, you know, seeing yourself as a natural conversationalist. I felt like I was pretty naturally able to build rapport with anybody. So I never, ever used scripts ever. I thought they were terrible. I would never use them. I thought they were dumb and I thought they made people sound robotic. And at the time I would go on, you know, 10 appointments, listing appointments, and I might get three or four, right? That resulted in a client. And at the time I was like, no, oh, that's not too bad. Um, I thought I was on top of the world with these results. And that was until I attended the, a conference across the country, right? I hopped on a plane from Michigan at the time. I just signed up for coaching. I flew all the way to California to continue learning how to become a millionaire, right? And to my surprise, all of the speakers on stage, the million dollar agents, all they kept talking about was, how they practiced their scripts, how they stayed on schedule, how they role played with different sales scenarios with partners all across the country, how they treated each day the exact same so they could achieve duplicatable results. Speaker after speaker, it just kept coming up. And then I'm thinking to myself, okay, if all of these rock star agents are doing it, who the heck was I to not be doing it too, right? I mean, what do I know that they don't? Did I think my way was better? What did I have to lose if I tried to copy them and I failed? I really had nothing to lose. So I tried it, right? And let me tell you guys, this is a game changer. After practicing consistently every single day for a few weeks, I saw my closing ratio begin to rise. 50% became 60, 60% 60 became 70. And now I basically, my closing ratio is 85%. So imagine you go on 10 appointments for people that you don't know, and you're, set, you're, you're basically taking eight out of every 10 appointments that you set for yourself. So I'm curious, guys, how would that impact your life? How much more money could you be making if you're landing these appointments? So that, to me, is the first secret to becoming a real estate millionaire, practicing your sales skills daily. We are in a sales business, and it may sound simple, but most agents, they don't do it. They don't do it. And I meet them every single day. In fact, many of my friends still don't do it, even though they knew that I did it that way. They're paid thousands and thousands of dollars when they pick up a client, but they never, ever practice what to say. Right. And it sounds crazy to me. So what do these magical scripts do? Right. They allow you to become more comfortable in any sales situation. It empowers you to be seen as a professional as an expert when you're talking to your clients. So you're not fumbling and mumbling like I am today, um, but I'm just at home so I can do that. Um, but it helps you lead clients to make the right decision effortlessly, right? This tiny little change made a huge difference for me. And those gals and guys that I showed you earlier, they did the same thing, the exact same thing. So here's the deal. If you don't know what to be practicing at the end of this class, I'm just going to give you guys my scripts. I give them to everyone for the people on the call that know me. They probably have them already, but I want to give you guys those scripts. So let me show you guys a text from a woman named Annie Spano. Um, 
Annie is, she, um, I met her through social media. Um, she asked me to speak at one of her events. She's a very, just awesome, awesome human being. She inspires a lot of women. And she decided to get a real estate license, brand new agent. And she said, I just want to follow you. I'll do whatever you say. What? Give me your scripts. Let's do this. So I gave her the scripts. And literally, she if you follow her on social media, it was so cute. For the first two or three days, she would try to get on the phones. And she would try to call her leads. And she would stop because of what? Fear. She had a ton of fear. Guys, I had the same fear. Two months it took me of lying to my coach, literally lying, saying I was making calls. And I wasn't because I'm amiable. I am a high eye. I like everybody to like me. And I didn't want to feel rejection. But Annie only took her a few days. So that's awesome. She got on the phone and she literally sent me a text. There it is. These small wins are celebrated. She took an $800,000 listing and she called me and said, I don't even know how to take the listing. I don't know how to fill out the paperwork, but I got them to say yes. And then her next deal was 600,000. Her next deal was 450,000. And now this is months ago. Um, she is well on her way to becoming a top producer. I remember zero days in the business, took her three days to implement the skills, call people and take action, which we have to do, right? And look at the results. This is literally months ago in our crazy, crazy market. And I get messages like this all around the clock. And I promise you guys, this stuff doesn't just work for me and Annie and, and charity. This works for everybody. And I'll continue to show you guys proof throughout the class because I want you to see how easy it could be for you too if you just take the action. So cool stuff, right? Are we still awake, guys? Put yes in the chat box. Are we still here? Are we still paying attention? So I'm hoping I can pack as much value in the web class today for you guys. Let's not waste time. Let's get to secret number two. Oh, look at all these yeses. Woo -woo. All right. So um, let's see. Let me get to my secret number two. All right. How to successfully reach out to the cheapest leads on the planet and actually convert them into clients. So the thing is, before I really understood how to do this, I had a very traditional roller coaster business. I mean, do some of you have that? One, one month you're doing one deal, three months no deals, then you do two, then you do none. It's some months are up, some months are down, but overall things are pretty unpredictable. Yep, that's what Victoria's saying. So it's frustrating, right? It's you're trying to plan and attempt to scale, but it's essentially impossible. You just can't scale that way. So, like I had mentioned before. I got a coach to help me fix this, these problems 12 years ago. I plopped down between twelve dollars and $20,000 a year to put an end to this. And then I would spend, you know, five to $10,000 a year traveling to events so I could continue to soak up the message that what I'm doing is going to make me a millionaire. What I'm doing is hard, yes, but there's people out there like me, the weirdos, that are continuing to do this. So I wanted to expose myself to the people doing the same thing. And you know they were tra training daily and it was the best money I've ever spent. So what I got from it was accountability and actually running my business like a business. So guys, before this, I used to let the day happen to me. I would wake up, I would take things as they popped up on my calendar and I knew I wanted real estate success, but looking back, I wasn't really acting like it. I mean, who here lets the day happen to them? I think that's just the way most realtors um, react. And one of the most important things I learned was how often I needed to be reaching out to prospects to keep my pipeline full. And the answer to that was every day, right? Monday through Friday. That's right. I reached out to prospects every single day, which is something I wasn't doing before when I had my roller coaster business. My reach out efforts were sporadic. They were unorganized like most agents. And not just any prospects, guys. I was reaching out to the cheapest leads on the planet. And I know you guys aren't going to love it, but it's expireds and fizbos. And today you might say, oh gosh, expireds. There's no expireds in the market. Well, we just took two last week. Phil DeMuth built his business and still to this day takes fizbos and expireds every single week. So they are out there and we have to go find them. I'll tell you guys a fun story. My first... Um, my first expired listing that I took in, in Raleigh, I was at the Cary office. So for those of you that are out of state, it's just like two different cities right next to each other. Um, 
I came to a Remax office and I got this, uh, or I called this guy and he was in Carolina Country Club, which is a really fancy uh, area of town. We call it ITB inside the Beltline. And my carry agents at the office said, how did you get that listing? We never get, um, we never get listings inside the Beltline, ITB, which I had no idea what it was at the time. But guess what? I didn't have those limiting beliefs that I couldn't get a listing in Carolina Country Club. I just called numbers on a paper and I talked to the person, to the human, and I help them solve their problems. And this guy literally said, you're the only agent that sounds professional, sounds, you know, like you know what you're talking about. He said, get over here and list my house. Guys, that was the first time. So um, it was pretty amazing. And I love that I didn't have the limiting beliefs that the people in my office did. And I kept getting listings inside the Beltline. So just by changing those two things, the consistency behind my efforts and reaching out to the right prospects that were actually ready, willing, and motivated, my entire life changed. I mean, think about it. You guys buy leads and these prospects are cold, right? They, you're still calling cold leads all the time. So I had blind faith that if I kept it up, I would become successful. And I was right. And it wasn't easy, right? There was definitely the failing forward moments, the feeling like you're stupid or the stumbling and the fumbling, but that's what makes you better. But soon after starting this practice, my business started to explode and I was making five to eight appointments per week. I was taking anywhere from four to 10 new listings per month. And I fully attribute that to those, to changing those two things. So if you're curious, how do I successfully reach out to the cheapest leads on the planet and convert them into prospects or I'm sorry, clients every morning, you get this list of expireds and for sale by owners, and you start reaching out to them every single day. You, you, you guys are probably seeing where this is headed, right? Pairing consistent practice and consistent reach outs with a killer audience that's ready and boom, right? So those two things alone can 180 your career. And for some reason, nobody wants to do them. And because nobody wants to do them, this is where I'm begging you guys, do them, right? The herd is going this way and you go this way. So let me introduce you guys the next, I saw you pop that up on the screen, Billy. Um, this is Jeff. Jeff is actually my brother-in-law. Um, Jeff is uh, Jeff Call and he's still in Michigan. Um, Jeff was in the automotive industry for 20 years. And I would literally call him every week and be like, dude, I just made this much money. Why are you selling cars? We're both in sales. You're stuck at a dealership for 65, 70 hours a week, building someone's empire for them. You're a great sales guy. Why don't you come into real estate? For 20 years, I've been begging Jeff and he's watched me grow and grow and grow. Finally, guys, finally, he had enough and he wanted a career change. So he came into real estate, but here's the good news. He was stubborn. Just like he was stubborn listening to me for 20 years to come into the real estate game, he was stubborn for the first four months. He did not do what I said. Why? Because Jeff is amiable. He's just like me. He doesn't want to be told no. He doesn't want to get rejected. Jeff was going to do it his way. He was going to just figure it out because he had 30, he's 44 years old, 44 years of sphere and people that knew him. And he was going to call his past clients in the automotive industry. And they were all just going to flock to him and buy homes from him. Well, guess what? That didn't happen. And what, four or five months in, he was struggling. And I could tell, and I said, Jeff, just please listen to me. So I put him in a little accountability group. In fact, with Annie um, is one of them. And every morning they jump on a call. He was listening to them, making appointments, knocking it out of the park. And guess what? After two weeks of consistency and making the calls, his pipeline was full. He got his first listing. Um, he got his first buyer sale. Now he actually hired his ex-wife. Yes, they're friends. Um, she's coming in to help him run his business. He's onboarded two agents and he is just getting listing after listing after listing, all smiles, really, really happy, but he needed to bust through that fear, right? We all have that fear. So at the end of this class, I'm literally going to give you the same skip scripts I gave him, like the same. There's nothing different here. Um, so there's no difference between you or I. Everything I've accomplished in real estate and all of the people I introduced you to, you guys can do the same thing. It's truly isn't that challenging, right? It's just the little, little habits, namely consistency, that propel you guys to the top. You have to take that action, right? So crazy concepts, right? Right? Call people often, say the right things, you'll fill your pipeline. But remember, 
90% of agents don't do this. They just don't do this. They just want to, I guess, struggle every day and beat their head against the wall. So if you're not getting the results you guys want, think about making these little changes and you'll see a world of difference. So guys, are things starting to clear up a little bit, right? And say yes in the chat box if you're if things are starting to clear up. So let's add a little more clarity to the process and dive into it. Secret number three. We got some yeah, yeses. We got some yeses. yeses. Tons of them rolling in. Well, good, good. All right. So secret number three, one appointment a day is all you need, right? One appointment a day. It's how do you ensure this appointment is worth your time? So if you were listening to what I was saying earlier, I was booking five to eight appointments per week when I was reaching out to the hot and ready prospects. That's about one per day. One appointment per day is all you need, right? Apple a day keeps the doctor away. One appointment a day makes you a millionaire. Um, so armed with my scripts, the consistent practice and the habits of reaching out every single day, getting appointments booked, it became pretty easy. And I promise you, if you do it consistently, it'll become easy for you too. The real challenge I had was that I was so eager, I went on every single listing appointment you know, that I had because I wanted to you know, practice. And I wanted to go and become best friends with the person. And I wanted to close the deal on the spot. And I felt that Maybe I could just motivate every person um, you know, that I came in contact with to sell their home because I was becoming such a great salesperson, right? I mean, I think a lot of us feel that. I just, just get me in front of them and I'll get them to, to sell. Good God, was I wrong, right? I was wasting probably at the time 10 to 15 hours each week visiting homes of sellers that were not ready, were not willing, and were not able to sell. I was spinning my wheels. I was getting frustrated and really, in all honesty, getting resentful. And once my coach said, do not get attached to the outcome. If you generate, you do not have to tolerate. Think about that, guys. If you generate every day, you do not have to tolerate. So go on appointments with the most qualified prospects so you can guarantee a shot at selling their home. And it wasn't until I started to prequal these appointments that this problem went away. So how many of us on this call, when you go out to a listing appointment, you have a pre-qualification process? Say yes or no um, in the chat box. I'm just curious to see who actually has a series of questions that they ask their sellers or potential sellers before, no. It's crazy, right? I mean, think about, it, it boggles my mind, but yeah, I need this. Okay, Victoria, we're gonna help you with that because until I started doing this, the, you know, I, I really save more of my time. Plus, if you go on every single appointment, there's a high chance like me that you're going to hit burnout. So I'm sure you're wondering how in the world do I pre-qualify someone to properly avoid this? So get a pen and paper. Hopefully you guys have them because um, I'm about to give you all the questions you need to ask. And here they are. OK, so imagine that I am uh, I'm the agent and you're calling the seller. You've already set the appointment. You're on the call. Hey, Mr. Seller, I'm going to see you tomorrow at five. I'm so excited um, to meet you and your family. But before I come out, Mr. Seller, there's a series of questions I need to ask you to better prepare. Is it okay if I ask now? And the prospect's going to say, sure. And then I'm going to ask, you know, Bob, if what I say makes sense and you feel comfortable and confident that I can sell your home, are you planning to list with me tomorrow at five when I see you? Now, maybe the prospect will say no. Maybe they'll say yes. Most of the time they say, sure. Yeah, it depends on what you have to say. Sometimes they say no, and that's where I'll dig a little deeper. Again, guys, you need to know that. They might say, no, I'm not planning on selling it. Oh, may I ask why? Because I'm thinking to myself, I'm coming out there to list it, so why don't you want to sell it? They might say, well, because I have four other agents I'm interviewing, or I have four other siblings that are looking, that they have to agree to this. And so now I'm thinking, okay, I have to have all four siblings there. You have to ask the questions. Um, so he, let's just say it for this example. He says, yes, I'm planning on listing with you when you come out. Great. Bob, are you planning to interview more than one agent for the job of actually selling your home? Well, yeah, I'm talking to you and two others. Awesome. Well, Bob, just so you know, I'm going to bring out a report card with me. I'm going to show you what I sell and what other agents sell in the market. You know, who might these agents be? That is a top agent 
response, right? I'm a top agent now. I can ask that because I know that my sales will probably exceed. If you're a new agent, you wouldn't ask that because you don't want to say I've sold two homes, right? So you skip that. And then I say, tell me again, where are you moving to, Bob? I need to know Bob's motivation. So I can go back to that motivation when we're at the appointment. And he says, I'm moving to Florida. Awesome, Florida. How exciting. How soon do you have to be there? Well, we need to be there in four months because I have a job transfer and blah, blah, blah. Okay, Bob, that's awesome. I'm so excited for you. When I see you, how much do you actually want to list your home for? Because as a professional real estate agent, Bob, I study homes and prices every single day. And I assume that you're going to list with me at a price that will actually cause your home to sell, correct? So what price, you know, he might say, well, you're the professional. I want you to, you, you to tell me. But sometimes, guys, they actually say, well, you know, I looked at Zillow and Zillow said 550, but I really want 650 because the market's so hot and blah, 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 especially in this market. You need to know if the if the seller is going to be some greedy, greedy seller and you're doing a market analysis and you know it's going to be 550 and they want 650. Why waste your time with these people? Right. So we need to know that going in. And then you might say, well, Bob, you want 650. That's awesome. You know, what price won't you go below? Well, I don't know. It's a negotiation. Okay, so if I got you a really strong offer, Bob, for six hundred thousand cash, close in two weeks, get you to Florida, would you look at that? Um, I don't know. I wouldn't look at that. Okay, what would you look at? Well, maybe six fifteen. Awesome. So now at least I know six fifteen is a new threshold for Bob. Um, even though I might need to still get them to five five fifty and get them into reality, I know a number so I can start somewhere. So you got to dig a little bit. Then I would ask qualifying questions. Hey, Bob, I'm going to actually prepare a net sheet for you so you can see exactly after my professional fee and the fees uh, incorporated in the sale, how much um, how much do you owe on the property so I can add that to the net sheet? They literally tell you no problem. And that's when you say, wow, that's a lot of equity that I need to protect. You're always trying to get them to want to work with you. Have you ever thought about selling it yourself, Bob? Now, I used to skip this question because I was nervous about the answer. Why would I want them to ever think about selling it themselves? But I need to know that if they all of a sudden are like, well, actually, yeah, I have a for sale sign in the yard right now and I'm Fisbo and I'm on Zillow. I need to know that because now I'm going into a for sale by owner appointment, which is a totally different strategy than an expired appointment. Hey, Bob, will you help finance the home for the buyer or do you want to cash out? No, we want to cash out. Would you describe the home for me? This question is so important. It's not because I want to find out if he has wallpaper. It's because I want to find out his personality style. I want to find out on the disc, is he a driver? Is he um, an expressive? Is he an amiable or is he a, um, uh, um, what do I call it? Analytical, right? If he starts saying, my home is 2,452 square feet. I have four bedrooms, three and a half baths. My lot size is 65,000 square feet. I know I'm dealing with an analytical, right? And I need to bring that guy or gal in formation. I need to bring him spreadsheets. I need to change my presentation because he's going to want to see numbers. If I get an expressive, it's, Oh my God, I love my home. I raised my family here and it's so beautiful and it makes me happy. And you look out the window and the birds are chirping and oh my gosh, I have an expressive, right? So she's going to be moved on emotion. And so I'm not going to go there and hammer her with spreadsheets. I'm going to talk about the buyer. Who does she want to buy your home? Would you write a letter to the buyer explaining how much you love this property? Absolutely. So it's getting to know the client. I'm doing all this research before I go out so I can connect with them better and they can pick me over the competition. And then I'll say, I'll be sending you a package of information, Bob. Will you take a few moments to, to review it before I come out? In this package will be everything about me, my team, myself, blah, blah, my company. So that way, when I meet you, Bob, you'll have all the information about me and we can really focus about on you and your goal to move to Florida. Do you have any questions before I arrive? Yes, what's your commission? They're always going to ask that, right? Well, you could say, gosh, Bob, that's a great question. In fact, I'm going to write it down. That'll be one of the first things that we talk about. What else do you need to know before I come out? Well, that's it. Okay, awesome. So you know our meeting should take between five and 25 minutes. Is that okay with you, including, actually, I usually would say, just so you know, our meeting should take between five and 25 minutes. That's including all the paperwork. Is that okay with you? Yes, that's fine. Well, I look forward to seeing you there at five. I, I started doing that and I got out so many weird objections, so much information to where when I was sitting in front of them, they didn't throw me off course, right? So this was a game changer for me. So I'm going to tell you a little story about Laura. 
Laura is my um, buyer's, she was a buyer's agent for me. And Laura would run out on every appointment, just like me, because we have very similar personality styles. We think we can convince every person to work with us, right? And when I started to coach her on using the prequal, because she never used it, and even though I would tell her to, she never would, she started spinning her wheels. Once she did this, it changed the trajectory of her business. And now she's on track to close 40 homes, majority of them listings, and she's a rock star. And she said, I will never go out without pre-qualifying again, because it saves her time, right? So now you know the difference between wasted time and maximize profits. It's a little step of pre-qualification. Seems kind of silly not to do it. I mean, think about our doctor. When you go there, the nurse takes you in. What's wrong with you? Do you have a fever? Blah, blah, blah. Then, then the doctor comes in and reads that. So we have to think about that. So for those of you that are still having trouble spinning your wheels on appointments, I promise if you implement this list of questions, you're going to watch your closing rate go up and your wasted time go down. Does that make sense? Everybody hit yes um, in the uh, chat box. And I know, um, Al Marie, you're driving. And yes, we can send you guys the questions later. Um, so you guys have them. So it is making sense to answer those questions. Lots okay, good. Yeses. Lots of yeses. Good. Cause we want it to make sense. Um, and I know I'm going through this fast. So now you guys know how to practice often. You'll have the scripts to do that. Obviously, if you stay till the end, you're going to know to prospect and reach out. I call them reach outs. Don't just get rid of the word prospecting. You're reaching out every single day, setting appointments, pre-qualifying them. So you're only meeting with mal, uh, motivated clients and winning those deals. So just based on that, what do you think would happen to your real estate business? Just based on those couple of things, right? The potential here is limitless, right? It's limitless to help you guys further the path to becoming real estate millionaires. So we'll go to secret four, but I think I see a question. Are you doing the pre-qualification on the actual appointment call? Yes. Um, but then also it depends, Lisa, if I'm talking to someone who's I don't know, a little more stubborn, or I can tell they're a driver, they're short with me, but I got the appointment. I might say to them, look, Bob, I know you're kind of busy. I'm busy too. I'm going to start preparing for our appointment. But if I run into any problems, is it okay if I call you before our appointment? Because I may have a few more questions about your property. Is that okay? And they'll say, sure. Great. What's the best time to call you? I know it's 12 o'clock. Maybe would six o'clock be better after work today? And you say, yes, I try to get them right at the appointment time. But if you're feeling like they're rushed or they literally told you in the beginning of the call that they're standing in line at an office or whatever, then I would cut it short and go back to it. But I would make sure that I got in front of these people because it truly shows that you're a professional, right? Just that little switch um, can put you ahead of the pack. Okay. Awesome. Thank you. You're very welcome. For Paulina, just tell her to send us a text or we'll send her a recording link. Um, send a text. Yeah, send send us a text. She she has her number. Oh, okay. Yeah, send the number. Um, Billy said uh, send a text, and then we'll send you the link for the, uh, the recording. The recording. Yep. Yep. Okay. Cool. Um, yeah. So the potential, like I said, is is limitless um, for you guys. So we'll go into secret number four: um, a revolutionary way to build your CMA that closes deals fast. Now, I like to call it a market absorption analysis. So you can kind of stand out, be a little bit different. Everyone says CMA, CMA. Um, so market report, market absorption analysis from other great um, agents that I met with. I, I like using that. So I'm sure a lot of you know how confusing a traditional CMA is to a client. And the truth is, this is where a lot of deals go dead in the water. Why? People don't buy when they're confused, right? So think about it. Last time you bought something, did you know exactly what you were going to get? Or was it like this grab bag of surprise and mystery and, and you were being confused, right? So before I had my magic three method, which I'll teach you guys in a moment, I would put together this massive book of information that my brokerage gave me, hoping to win the hearts of many clients, only to find that it was confusing them. It was information overload because they weren't in our field, guys. So it's too much information is overkill and you may lose a prospect whose mind doesn't work that way. You're right. We need to know our audience. So I think that, you know, I, I had a, a agent, I'll introduce you to her now. Her name is Susan. Um, and I met Susan before we used the three, three, three method. And I treated her kind of like an analytical, right? Um, she, and this is a client, I'm sorry, I called her an agent, but she's a client. So Susan was, 
a client that I treated like an analytical without knowing because I wasn't pre-qualifying that she was a complete expressive. So her mind didn't deal with numbers. And I went in there with a big thick packet and, you know, I went through all this stuff and I didn't get the listing. And when I called her and I said, why didn't I get the listing or what could I have done better? And she basically said to me that she felt it was information overload. She felt very confused and she went with an agent that helped her understand the value of her home in a more simple way. And I was like, oh, this stinks, right? And there were many more incidents where I felt like I was just there talking and showing and, and describing. So I decided uh, with my coach at the time that we would do something and create something called the magic of three. Okay. It's basically you, you go to a client's house and you do all the research before you analyze all the data. You're the professional, right? We're the ones that are supposed to look at the absorption rate in a market. We're the ones that are supposed to do all the behind the scenes. We're the one that's going to pull all the data. But when you go there, you briefly explain three actives, three expireds, three pendings, and three solds, right? And this process is a game changer. So I'm gonna introduce you to a, a gal named Cindy Quinlan. Um, Cindy just joined us, what, um, I don't know, now it's a couple months ago, and she was a brand new agent. She was actually in so intimidated by this CMA process because her former firm um, confused her by showing her this long drawn out process. And Cindy's like, I am a high expressive, I'm too intimidated. I'll never be a listing agent because I don't understand how to bring value to a client. I can't deliver the information that my broker wanted me to deliver. And once I sat down with her, I said, Cindy, trust me, my brain works like your brain. If you just, excuse me, use the magic of three and don't overcomplicate it, know the num numbers in your head. And by the way, my numbers go up or down depending on what I find because I do a one-stop listing appointment. But Victoria you, said, I am Cindy. I am Cindy. We are all Cindy, Victoria. I mean, maybe there's some analyticals on the call and that's fine, but most people are not analytical, right? They're not engineer brains. Um, but the magic of three is simple and it doesn't overcomplicate the process. And so once I showed Cindy the magic of three, we actually, she had a listing appointment. She was going to give me the listing. She said, you just take it. I don't even want it. I don't want to go on the appointment. I said, no, no, we're going to do it together. I zoomed in with her client to help her. And I said, let's do this process. So we, we did the, the three actives, three sold, three expired, three pendings, and we showed it to the client. Cindy was able to present it beautifully. And the client listed with her. She was so flippant excited. She said, all this time, I felt like I was never going to be a great agent because my brain didn't work that way. Um, so it's just an easier way to do it. And if this isn't how you're presenting CMAs, maybe try it. I don't know. It's a different way. I've shown hundreds of agents how to do this trick and not one has told me it didn't help. Charity, uh, Jeff, Mackenzie, all of them use the magic of three. So now you know how to easily get high quality appointments, create an unstoppable case for a client to work with you. Making a million dollars in real estate is not that far off guys, right? I mean, it really is not if you implement these things, but of course, even after all of that, you still have to present this next level CMA to close the deal, right? So let's chat about the most important step, which is the listing presentation. This is the icing on the cake. Um, so this is showtime. This is when you are going to present and we want you to present like a, a rock star. So before I had a solid presentation and closing process, this is what I did. I basically went to every single meeting with a potential client just to try and build rapport. That was what my coaching was from my first firm. Just go in there and build rapport. If you see something about golf on their wall, ask them, do you golf? And then they'll say, yes. And I would say, me too. Do you have kids? Me too. Do you have a dog? You were just trying to build rapport. So, and it was a different experience every single time, which I'm sure you know, it's not scalable and not a way to build a million dollar business when you have two to three appointments daily. So my problem was I didn't know how to close. I didn't know, I didn't have a process for myself to make the sale at the end. But now that I do, I feel confident that you can drop me in any city in the world. And if I can actually speak the language, I could find two to three new listings per week and get them all under contract with days, even though I don't know how to get out of their driveway without GPS. I mean, I came to Raleigh, North Carolina, didn't know a soul, couldn't get out of a driveway without GPS. And we sold 35 homes in a six month period. 
I didn't know where I was, guys. And all this was because I had the confidence. I knew what to say. I understood how to sound like a professional, come prepared like a professional, create authority in a sales situation with confidence by asking the right questions and maintaining control of the conversation. And guess what? Now I can close 85% of the meetings with the buyers and sellers that I go on. And these are not sphere, right? Even though I treat my sphere the same, these are, these are hot, ready, willing, and able buyers and sellers. So now we're going to read, um, we've got a little script book, so we're going to read through it and I can kind of show them. Let's see if Billy can answer. Yeah. Want to quick, quickly put that up? Oh, I don't, do you have the, the Oh, I don't have the, yeah. or you know what? I'll actually send in the script book. So, oh, yeah. so, so I'll it. just yeah. actually talk off the cuff about it. So the script, so this is our, um, our physical script book. We'll send to you guys. <clears throat> I thought Billy was going to queue it up for me, but so it's just a little script book and it has all everything you need, but basically it's, it's to walk in. So before I went to an appointment, I would get all excited, right? I don't know what most people do before appointments, but I would have to imagine listen to the radio, make calls in between appointments and not be mentally prepared. I would literally be so mentally prepared. I would have my listing presentation that I recorded in a headset playing through my speakers over and over again in the beginning when I was trying to learn it. And I would think it's showtime, right? I'm about to go make 10, 15, 20,000, $30,000 and I wanted to be prepared, right? Mentally and physically. So I would walk in and I would say, hi, you know, hi, Bob, it's Tina. Thank you so much for having me out to your house. I'm so excited about getting it on the market, but more importantly, getting it sold. Do you mind if I take a quick look at your home? And at that point he would say, sure. Do you want me to follow you around or do you want to do it? Either way, Bob, it's up to you. Sometimes the drivers, they, or I'm sorry, the, um, the amiables would say, fine, you can go look at it and come meet me at the table. The drivers were absolutely going to take you around. Now, what I found was the person that took control at that moment was usually the one that made the decisions, whether it's the wife or the husband. So that was the one I was paying more attention to um, at the appointment. And then we would sit down at the table and I would literally have my script in front of me. Let's see if I had a piece of paper. Let's pretend this is your little script, right? And I have it on a little, um, uh, what do you call that? I'm losing my mind. Uh, clipboard. clipboard. Thank yeah. you. Thank you, Billy. That's why we pay him the big bucks. Um, <laughs> so I have it on a little clipboard and I would have my script literally right there. And I would say, Bob, I am so excited about this appointment. I literally wrote down a series of questions. Would you mind if I asked them to you now? Now, guys, it wasn't a series of questions. It was my script. And he's sitting over there and I'm sitting over here. He doesn't know what I'm reading in the paper. So that's how I got through the listing presentation script in the beginning. I literally would just grab my pen and I would have tons of copies of the listing presentation. And I would just write notes as I was asking him the questions. And that way, if he threw me off, I could go right back to my paper and, you know, just I'm listening, nodding and going, where the heck am I? Oh my God, I'm losing my place. I'm losing my place. And then you just learn how to be better at it. So you don't have to be afraid of using a script. Now you're going to get better and better and better at it. I could recite it now and just do it for you live. And it's in my brain. So it's my words. They sound like me. Um, in the beginning, you might feel a little robotic because you're off, but eventually when it becomes natural, it's going to be you. So, so let's recap really quickly. You know that you need to practice your scripts. Oops, am I Sorry, jumping ahead? Talk about the 650 agents that they all use the script for. Oh yeah, oh oh yeah. He was just saying um, we have this network of agents. We have this top agent mastermind group, and um, they're all across the nation. I think we're in like 19 different states. One agent in France. Um, all 650 agents use this, right? They have. Um, great sales tools. They, they have a community and the results are in the billions of dollars. I mean, guys, this works, right? And this is just our little network. There are thousands and thousands and thousands of people through the years that I've met that use this method, but this is our little uh, mastermind group. So I'm pretty excited about that. Yeah. 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 So recapping quickly, um, now you know that you need to practice your scripts and you'll have, I think, some of the best in the game, right, in the next 15 minutes. And you know how to prospect, set up your appointments every single day, and make sure that you got some kind of sales potential with that, with that appointment. You know exactly how to prepare for a knockout sales presentation, actually present it and set yourself up to close with a strategy that closes about 85% of the time. So let me ask you, how hard does it seem to become a million dollar earner in the world of real estate now? I mean, think about it. 
Does it sound like rocket science? Say yes or no in the comment box. Rocket science or we need to learn more. <laughs> no, no, it's not that hard, guys. I mean, no, it's not. It's just doing the work, right? Taking the responsibility, doing the work, putting in the time. It's consistency. There's no magic pill in this, right? Everyone's looking for the magic, but there's no magic pill. I mean, the, the one thing I'll say too is um, you've got these social media stars out there. I was talking to a guy the other day and he called and he said, I have 100,000 followers on my social media. And do you know that I only sell about three or four homes a year from my social media accounts? Think about that. And he said, guys and gals call him all the time. Like, oh my God, I want to be like you. I need more followers. He goes, why? Why do you want more followers? Well, I want to sell more homes like you. He said, I pick up the phone. I don't have these followers are just, it's my business card. Guys, social media is a business card. When you find the prospect and they come find you, then they are going to see, does this human make sense? Do they seem like they do a lot of business? I might hire them, right? Who has a social media account that they thought was like the be all end all, you know, of getting business, right? Who was told social media is it? Say yes, if you thought social media was the way to go. Yes, 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 everybody. Do you, get your Instagram account going. I have 15,000 followers on social media. I might sell two homes a year on it. So yeah, I guess it, you could say that it works, right? Yeah. I mean, if you want two deals a year, two houses a year, right? <laughs> two to four. And I wasn't going to make us millionaires, guys. So do your Instagram. Do not depend on Instagram or Facebook. Now there's other little ways and tweaks, but the main goal to scale a business is to learn how to hunt. So I know we covered a ton in the past hour, um, but just that information alone can make you truly wealthy. And where most people have a problem with this information is they have specific questions that pertain to them, their unique situations. And I totally understand that I was in the same place. So look, if you guys just want the scripts, there's, you know, there's going to be ways. How do we get them? So we're going to, what are they going to do? We're going to send a link um, in the chat here. Okay. That was to the page that this video is supposed to be hosted okay. on. I'm going to um, be popping that in right when we get to the Q&A. So okay. if everybody stays on for about five, six more minutes, we'll, we'll send that link. In send a link. Allow you to hop in here. Okay, perfect. Um, yeah. I mean, so there's really, you know, at the end of this, there's nothing to buy here. Um, we're coming from contribution and I truly just want to help because the community is going nuts right now. People are, you know, they're struggling and it's, and it's tough out there. Nobody wants another buyer, right? They want listings. They want to sell a home. So how many of you are excited about what we talked about? Say yes in the chat box. Yes, 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 yes. Got a bunch of them. Yeah. Um, it's an eye opener. Good, good. It is exciting. Um, and how many of you are feeling a little overwhelmed about what we cover? Just put overwhelmed in the chat box, <laughs> right? Because I know it's a lot to squeeze in today. And I tried to cover, you know, as much as I could condensing 12 years of this, but um, I honestly just agree with everything that I explained. I mean, there's some work to do on your side, right? To get everything in place. So if you want to save time, research hours, testing, you know, what we can do is, um, I know we were going to book some one-on-ones. Yeah, um, and that, that link will be on this, uh, the link I'll send here. It'll be on there? Yeah, yeah. There's, okay. There's two buttons on that page. One will say, send me the scripts, and one will say, book an appointment. Okay, okay, perfect, perfect. So should we go, do we have another... Um, should we go to Cassidy? Yeah, let's we'll do. do a, we'll we'll show them one more. I just I have so many people um, that I just love. But again, I love telling stories because guys, it works. Um, this is John and Cassidy. Um, good. They a new, new agent. agent. I was feeling discouraged before today. Oh, good, overwhelmed and excited. We know what we call that: overwhelmed but excited, or fear and excitement. It's called nervous sighted. You're nervous but you're excited. So, um, so John and Cassidy, I met them. They were actually um, with a local company here called Fondo Morrissey, for those of you that are local. And um, they didn't, they, I think they sold one home in six months. They were just feeling lost. Um, they came to me and they said, hey, we want you to help us. We want to be part of the network. We want to tap in. And this is their second uh, year. They literally are, are sold 40 homes last year, um, 10 times the national average guys. They have a new development going in with brand new homes. So they, they met with a developer on one of the calls that they made, because you never know who you're going to meet. 
And these guys are kicking butt. So 35 homes our first year, they got a 40 unit development. Um, I remember I made a call and this lady said I wanted to see, she wanted to see a rental property. And I was like, okay, I'll go show her rental property again. I just, I just go and meet people. So I showed her a rental property. She said, no, I don't want, I don't want this property. I want to look at this other house. I showed her another house. She ended up buying the house. She ended up being one of the um, biggest uh, owners of Carhartt, you know, Carhartt um, outdoor wear. She, this lady was like a multi, multi, multi millionaire. She ended up buying 10 houses from me flipping them. And then I got to be the list agent on the other side. So one call to go meet a person for a um, rental sale, which I was happy to go because I wanted to meet the human and make the relationship. Um, and it turned into, oh, gosh, hundreds of thousands. So, so regardless of you, if you've been in the game, you know, longer than I have, or today is your first day, like some of you on the call, I know we can help you hit that level. If you're not making millions of dollars in real estate, it's going to take time, right? But for so many reasons, we let the fear of wasting time, resources, lack of know-how kind of hold us back from things that are actually going to help our business. And in reality, if it really scares you, it's probably exactly what you need to do, right? I was so afraid of this, so afraid, but I knew that it would help me get to the next level. So stop creating excuses you know, on why this won't work for you. Stop focusing on negatives, what people tell you out there. I can't do it, or I hate cold calling. Um, it's not cold calling, it's reach outs, right? But focus on the possibility of what if, right? Remember, if you guys don't change anything in your business or your life, how do you expect things to change? You can't keep doing what you're doing and doing what you're doing and getting the results you're getting, or it just will not change. So let the tools and, and tips and support. I've worked so hard to create for you guys, help you guys master the art of generating real estate wealth for yourselves. There's really nothing you should be afraid of, right? You're going to be saving time. You're going to be making more money. You're going to have happier customers. I promise you. I have invested over $250,000 in coaching in the last 10 years and thousands of hours of practice. So if you just spend this, you know, your time on the five simple steps, you can save yourself a lot of time and money and headaches. Um, so what do you guys think that you can make of this information if you actually implemented it, right? I mean, if you took this and you kind of implemented the steps out of curiosity, paste your answers on how many deals, how many opportunities and contracts do you think that you'd have in the next 12 months if you did this Monday through Friday? Let me see the numbers. Let's see here. 40. 40. Right. I love that, Nikki. 40 deals. Who else? Come on, guys. How many deals do you actually think you could do? Remember, the national average is four. 60, 60 30. 30. I love those numbers. Those are million dollar earner numbers. Heck yeah. <laughs> I mean, 60 deals in our market here, we have a $10,000 average. That's 600,000. So I'm seeing 300,000, 350,000, 500,000, half a million dollars, guys. If I said to you all, do this and I'm going to pay you a quarter of a million dollars a year to do this every single day, Monday through Friday for just two hours a day. I'm going to pay you up front 250,000. Do you guys think that you could do it? Yes. Yeah, yes. Yeah. Everybody do. <laughs> then why don't we do it as agents, right? Why don't we do this? Because we're not surrounded by the right people doing it, right? We're not, we're not in that world. Most real estate offices are like ghost towns or libraries. Shh. Don't talk. Somebody might hear you prospecting. And, you know, like it's the weirdest thing. And when I started doing this, I literally, um, people in my office just, I had to go home because they were like, what is she doing in there? Why is she making all that money? So it is interesting. So even if you got half of this info, right, half of this, it would still change your life. I used to come back from conferences and implement 20% and my business grew, right? So it's worth a quick call to see if you guys you know, kind of can personalize those steps. So what I'm going to do is we're going to accept about 20 people. Um, you know, we had a lot that signed up through the links and everything. Yeah. So we were kind of going to do like this lottery thing. Um, it's my way of giving back. Um, we were going to do 20 calls, have you guys on our calendar. Um, you know, once the slots are filled, I can't, I just, you know, can't spend too much time doing it, but I want to go ahead and help some of you on this call and others that have reached out to us. Um, to really see if we can change the trajectory of your business like mine was changed because the lean like totally, totally changed my life. Um, yeah, I think Billy's putting in the, um, 
Oh my God. I love that. It says call, call. <laughs> yeah, we brought that URL. For Did this. you really? Yeah. Oh, you're so funny. You it's like better call Saul. Right. Yeah, call, call. <laughs> I love it. So, so yeah, for some of you, again, we're going to kind of do a lottery system and um, take some of the people on this call. And then there were others that we've did um, just to give back, you know, sometimes you just need that little moment of aha. Um, but there's still things you need to set up. And I have a, my coach actually, um, and the companies that I use for the dialing systems have given me links to help share with you guys, um, to kind of give you discounts to setting up your business that way. So I've enjoyed it. I want to open it up to questions. Um, what questions do you guys have while we're here for a few more minutes? And feel free to unmute yourself. Yeah. And you, you can unmute yourselves. Yeah, mm -hmm. totally fine. Yeah, absolutely. Don't be shy. You're about to go yeah. make calls, right? Say, this, this is your chance. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So if there's anything on there that was confusing or um or you just, you know, whatever, have a quick, quick question, please ask. I'll ask the question, Tina. Sure, go ahead. Um, Tina, do you guys use a dialer or anything? Like where are you getting your list from? We do. So we mm -hmm. uh, use a dialer called Vulcan 7. Um, okay. I think it's the best dialer on the market because it's compliant, right? So there's Mojo Dialer and Red X and other ones. On my YouTube page, guys, there is a link to the, um, no, let's see. Yeah, Vulcan 7. And I have a link that gets you guys a discount for it. Um, I'll have to maybe have Billy. Yeah, we'll send it. To we'll everybody. send it to everybody. Um, but it is a discount because I called him and I said, hey, Ren Jones is the owner I said, I've been using this for 15 years now and, you know, can we get a discount for our people? So, so yeah, I'll, we'll put that in the link box too. So you guys can get that. And every more, every um, evening at 12 or actually at 12 AM, the system goes through and pulls all the new expireds, all the new for sale by owners, all the new withdrawn listings. And the other thing is you don't only have to call those, you can call your neighborhood, right? Call your neighbors. Um, just let them know that you're the mayor of that neighborhood. And when they think of real estate, they better think of you, right? So you don't only have to call, you can ease your way into this and not go right for the expireds. Um, that's what I did. I started to call around different neighborhoods, speak to the neighbors. So there is a way to kind of ease into it. So I hope that answered your question. Yes, it did. Thank you. Anybody else? I just subscribed to Vulcan for three months. Uh, have you had Vortex. any, or Vortex, sorry. That's why I'm wearing glasses. I do not have experience with Vortex. I have experience with Red X, Land Voice, Mojo Dialer, and Vulcan. And I've had Vulcan for years and I really love them. So, so not Vortex. There's another one um, actually that, um, that uh, is like Vulcan. It's called Espresso Agent. I actually have a link to that one too because it's um, similar ownership. Very, very similar. One is maybe there's one thing that it doesn't do, but it's a lot cheaper. So I'll actually... Uh, maybe make a note, Billy. We'll send everybody Espresso Agent and Vulcan 7. Those are two okay. of my best Absolutely. and favorite. Yeah, yeah. So we'll send you guys those. Anything else, guys, before we head out this gorgeous Saturday? The sun is out. Oh, it is Saturday. Your brains are spinning with excitement and fear. <laughs> <laughs> Any, anybody else that has a question? No, no, no. Well, awesome guys. Well, I had fun. Um, this was our first kind of web class with um, awesome slides that Billy helped me create, which is great. And um, this was phenomenal. Oh, thank you. I really appreciate that. And um, there is so much on my YouTube page, guys. I, I mean, literally my listing presentation, all that is on there. But if you want a one-on-one -on -one call, hit that link that um, Billy has on there. And um, you are so welcome, Victoria. Um, and then we can, you know, hopefully select you and we'll do a little strategy session and uh, see how we can help get your business jump started. So thank you all. You're amazing. And we'll see you soon. Hey, okay, uh, bye bye. Oh, oh Marie, we'll, we'll send you a, a message. We'll send you a text. We have everybody's phone number on the call. We'll send you a message if, um, if you get selected for it. But go ahead and fill out that application on the link I posted. I'll, I'll post it again right now as I'm talking. Um, click that link, uh, you know, select which option you want, either the scripts or the um, or the one on one. And uh, we'll get back to you here later today. Awesome. Awesome, guys. Have a great Saturday. We'll see you soon. Bye. Thank you. You too. Thank Bye. you.